Hey everybody, welcome back to The Clean Cuisine. This is Jen here and today we are going to be doing a spaghetti squash with a homemade marinara sauce that has also our own homemade sausage in it. This is all from scratch guys. This will come together in less than an hour. Again, you're gonna know everything that's in this dish. None of those nasty ingredients that you're gonna get if you were to purchase it all through packaging. So I'm gonna start with one pound of our gram, ground pork. Okay, and I'm just gonna stick this in a bowl. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in a tablespoon of my homemade um, sausage seasoning. And I'll put that up here now. I usually make all of my spice blends in larger portions. This is a really easy way, guys. If I ever put anything up there, you think it's gonna be something you can use, go ahead and quadruple it multiply it by five whatever the case may be and just put it in a little mason jar a little plastic a jar whatever it is that you have and it's going to make things so much sorry so much easier the next time you go to make that because the seasonings are already put together so i'm going to go ahead and put that tablespoon of my sausage seasoning on my pork i'm just going to mix this this is just how easy it is guys seasoning pork mix it and you're ready to brown it in whatever form you want whether it be patties whether it be links or in this case since i'm going to be using it as the meat in my marinara sauce i'm just going to ground it up and brown it like i would ground beef in my skillet pan so i'm going to set this aside while i'm working on my marinara sauce and my spaghetti squash just to kind of let all those spices and herbs infuse into the pork just make it taste that much better a lot of times I'll even make this ahead and put it in the fridge overnight and cook it in the morning. That way those the seasoning really has a chance to absorb into that pork. So let's go over to the other side of the kitchen and get started on our marinara sauce and our spaghetti squash. Okay everybody, so on this side we're gonna be working on our marinara sauce as well as getting our spaghetti squash ready to get roasted in the oven. So right now I have my oven preset on 400 degrees and I've lined a baking sheet with aluminum foil. Now these can be tricky, they're a little tough to, to get into, but once you get into the center, it's a little softer and you can manipulate it a little bit easier. So I've just kind of already started and I've just gone through, I usually will go through the side and I'll just stick the sharp part of my knife straight down, like so, and just kind of wedge it around. Be careful when you're doing this, I don't want anybody to hurt themselves, but just takes a little bit of force and eventually they will uh, they'll just pop open okay I'm gonna <laughs> don't want to hurt myself here on camera so I just go back and forth until I can there you go I've cracked through the other side and then I'll just go down with my knife like so not as elegant as I would have liked but there you have it and then I'm gonna scoop out the insides there which I'll do in just a second after I Cut my other one. Let's see if I can demonstrate this a little easier. So again, just take the sharp part of my knife, try to go down into the center. Push down on the other side and then I'll take it and I'll turn it around and do the same on the other side. So there we go, that one's a little easier. Not quite evenly cut, but you get the picture. Okay. So now I'm just going to take a spoon and we're going to scrape out all those seeds and pulp that you have on the inside there. And just use the, the sharp part of the spoon to kind of as your guide to, to just scrape all those little hair-like pieces out and it'll only take you a minute or two but practice makes perfect guys and we're gonna get these in the oven and this is a great great substitute for grain pasta if you're looking for if you're trying to do low carb or in our case we're doing a lot more plant-based this is an excellent substitute for pasta Believe it or not, my five-year-old who hates onions, 
She has such a unique palette. She loves spaghetti squash. And as parents, I'll tell you, if you don't make them try it, then they are never gonna like it. I know sometimes parents are just so, myself included, I was so hesitant to make them try different vegetables and try different dishes, because I just assumed their reaction would be to not like it. Well, most of the time it was, but I think I read somewhere that kids have to try something 15 times before their palate changes. So that's what we do. We just keep putting it in front of them. And I have to say my kids will eat a lot of different stuff now. They still put up a fight about certain things, but we just keep reintroducing it in different ways. I'll try to cook it different ways to figure out a way that they like it. And lo and behold, there's a lot of stuff they'll eat now. So that is my little uh, two cents on kids and vegetables. If that doesn't work, then you just hide it in stuff like smoothies or sauces. I do that all the time too, but that's a different video. All right, so we're almost done here. Just brought all my seeds out. And now what I'm gonna do is just drizzle them with a little olive oil, salt and pepper. And then we're gonna just throw them in the oven at 400 degrees. And I'll give you a very good idea of how long that'll take until they get to the softness and consistency that we're looking for where we can shred up the inside. Okay, so I got my beautiful spaghetti squash here. I'm just gonna drizzle very lightly some olive oil and then I'm gonna salt and pepper it. And then what I like to do is I actually turn them upside down know if it helps steam it a little bit easier. I don't know what the deal is, but I like to do that. You don't have to. But I turn mine upside down and I'm going to put them on the middle rack and then we'll check on them in about 15-20 minutes. Okay, so I've already diced up half of my onion. I'm going to deal with one medium-sized onion here and when I make my marinara sauce, I will notoriously make it in bulk just freeze a lot of my leftovers so this is perfect later on in the week or in the month when I just have nothing going for dinner I've got no energy to make even anything so you just defrost your marinara sauce all you got to do is boil a bag of pasta and there you go dinner's ready so I've diced this up really good um, my point with that was so today I'm just going to show you with three cans of our diced tomatoes. So normally I might at least double that, if not triple that, if I'm in the mood. But So I've got my deep saucepan or my deep pot is on medium-high heat right now, warming up. Now normally I buy my garlic peel just because I'm lazy and I don't want to do this extra step. But if you've never done this, Take your garlic clove that still has the skin on. You're going to take the side of your knife here, okay, and you're just going to put it on the garlic and just give it a smash. And then what happens is this will peel right off, or at least pretty darn easily. There you go. You don't have to sit there and mess with it. So I am going to practically mince this. You can also use a garlic mincer, which I have, but I'm just going to chop it today because I don't need it completely minced. I kind of like a little chunk of garlic in my sauce, but definitely dice it to your liking. So I had four garlic cloves, one medium onion, and I'm going to throw some olive oil into our pan and get these going. It smells so good. If you have never sauteed garlic and onions before, I mean, just experiment with that. Just do that. Your house will smell so good. There are so many dishes that I make that start off like that, just with some sauteed garlic and onions. All right, so that's, you know, chopped enough for my liking. I usually like to add my onions first, too, because uh, garlic tends to brown and burn a lot faster if you're not careful when you are sauteing your onions and your garlic. So I'll go ahead and set these aside and put that in first. And then a minute or two later, I'll go ahead in and add my garlic. 
So let's take this over to the oven. So I'm going to go ahead and just add in about two to three tablespoons of some oil. You want it to be nice and hot. You can see it's smoking a little bit. I'm going to add my onion in there. And right away you want to give it a stir. Turn it down just a little bit. Make sure you get it covered in that oil that you put in there. I'm going to turn down my heat just a little bit. So it's about a medium heat right now. And it's starting to brown a little bit, so I am going to grab my garlic. My four cloves of garlic and put that in there. And since I've turned it down and I'm going to stir this real quick, I'm going to grab my marinara, or not my marinara, but my uh, diced tomatoes and add that in before it has an opportunity to burn. You do not want your garlic and onions to burn. All right, so right before I add in any of my liquid, I don't do this every time, but I like to illustrate it to you guys because it really can make a difference. I'm going to grab about a tablespoon of my oregano, and I'm going to crush it up a little bit and then put it in the pan. Anytime you add your dry herbs to a little bit of oil, it really, really brings them to life, and you can smell it instantly. It smells so good. Um, and it'll just, you know, it, it's all about adding that little extra bit of flavor. So now I'm going to go ahead and add in my three cans of my organic diced tomatoes. I love to get the fire roasted. It's not a necessity. But again, it's adding that little extra bit of flavor everywhere you can. And I think the fire roasted is delicious. So I'm going to add in all three cans and stir that up. You may wonder why I did diced tomatoes as opposed to already a tomato sauce or a tomato puree. I switch back and forth because I usually will hit my sauce with the immersion blender so that's going to take out all those huge chunks of tomatoes anyway but that is an added step so if you want to save that step go ahead and buy the tomato sauce or the tomato puree in the can as opposed to the diced tomatoes. Just so happened that was what was in my pantry, so I'm gonna use that and just hit it with the blender a little bit. So, got my tomato sauce in there, got my onions, my garlic, got some oregano, so this is already coming together. It's just about done. You just need a few more ingredients and it is gonna set it over the top and that is how easy it is to make your own marinara sauce, your own pasta sauce with none of the extra crap involved. Okay, so to the pot now, I'm gonna turn it down to like a low medium, because otherwise your sauce is gonna bubble all over your stove. I'm gonna go ahead and add in about a half a tablespoon to a tablespoon of salt to start. Remember, go easy on the salt to start. You can always add more later. Then I'm gonna do some nice fresh crack. Fresh cracked pepper, and I'm going to also go ahead and add in a couple bay leaves. So I'm just going to have this sitting here simmering on the stove while I finish my spaghetti squash and cook up my sausage so this will have some time to really sit and marinate. Oh, before I forget, I almost forgot my tomato paste. Now you can add in as much of this as you want. If you add in the whole jar, it's going to make it a really, really thick, pasty sauce. If you're not looking for that, go ahead and omit it all together. If you want to play with it and add a tablespoon to a half a can, which is what I normally do, go ahead and add that in. So I'm going to add in that paste, about a half can worth, and just kind of let it all come together here in the pot on a low heat low to medium again you just want to make sure it's not bubbling so much that it's splashing all over your stove so just let it hang out 
and we'll come back and stir it occasionally and then since I use the diced tomatoes I'm just going to hit it with the blender before it's time to serve. Okay guys so I took my spaghetti squash out after about 30 minutes of roasting and I turned one over just to check for doneness and I want you to see this so this is how you know that it's done. So I'm going to just take my fork and I've let them cool a little bit but it's still pretty warm. I have taken my fork and I'm just going to slightly pull away from the sides and you can see that it's very easily coming apart and that right there is our spaghetti. You can see that. Yummy, yummy, yummy. So it, it's super simple at this point. Once it's cooked, you just are going to scrape and you'll be surprised at the volume of you know, your spaghetti, quote unquote, spaghetti that you'll get from these squash. So I'm just going to take the time to go ahead and pull that apart while my marinara sauce is still simmering. It smells so good in the house right now. I am also, while I'm doing this, going to turn on my saute pan and get my sausage going so that all I have to do is just kind of add that, incorporate that into my marinara sauce and then it'll be time to serve. And it's kind of fun too, if you want, you can just kind of pull the spaghetti apart from the sides here on these squash like I'm doing here, and then save yourself cleanup or another dish, go ahead and just plop the marinara sauce with the sausage right on top of here and give people like a fork and a spoon to serve. And that way, you know, you just pull up your spaghetti squash right out of the little squash itself. How cute is that? So there you go. So I'm just going to do that to each one while my saucepan's heating up and then I'm going to brown my sausage. Okay, so my pan is nice and warm. I'm going to go ahead and take my sausage and I'm actually only going to take half of that pound to brown for my sauce and then I'm going to save the other half just to put in the um, Put in the refrigerator for tomorrow. I'll, we'll make some patties or something out of it. The girls like to get involved in that way. They'll make their patties and then we'll go ahead and brown them. We're cutting back a little bit on animal protein too, so this will be good. It's just going to add a nice flavor component to my sauce. It's not even a necessary step, but my husband is sometimes still uh, doesn't consider something a meal unless it's got some animal protein, so there you go. Okay, so I'm just going to let this brown and we'll uh, revisit this in just a few minutes. Meanwhile, my marinara sauce is looking and smelling great. I'm going to go ahead and remove my bay leaves and hit this with the immersion blender just to kind of break up some of those chunks. But you'll also notice as it's simmering, those tomatoes get really soft and they kind of start breaking up on their own. So it's just a matter of how do you like your sauce. Do you like your sauce nice and chunky? I actually do. My girls don't, so I blend it for them. But I could be totally content eating it just like this. Again, if you want to use just the sauce or puree, save yourself even that step. That makes life that much easier. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those bay leaves and do that now. All right, so I'm just going to pulse this just a few times. good consistency for our family. So at this stage you definitely want to taste it. Um, see if you need more salt. Mm. See if you want more pepper, a little more oregano. I think it tastes fantastic. And the longer you can allow this to set and simmer, the deeper those flavors are going to get.
I did learn a little trick from my friend Jamie Oliver. Okay, I wish he was my friend because I like love him and his style of cooking. But uh, if you don't, if you can't let your sauce simmer all day on the stove, a nice way to add a good depth of flavor is to add a really good splash of any sort of balsamic. The better the balsamic, the better the flavor. So don't use a really cheap balsamic. But just like a half tablespoon to a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. This is a totally optional step, guys. Again, this is if you don't really have a lot of time to let it sit and get... Uh, you know, just simmer all day long. This is just going to add another dimension, another layer of flavor to your sauce that'll kind of give it the sense that it has been simmering all day long. So if you want to do that, add a splash of that in and taste it and see if it needs anything else. Our sausage is just about done over here, so we'll go ahead and add that into our sauce shortly. And then you'll be ready to top your spaghetti squash. All right, so I've got my sausage browned just the way I like it. And I'm going to go ahead and add that into my pasta sauce. Turn that off. And then I'm just going to incorporate that sausage in. I did reserve a little of my sauce off to the side because I would like some that doesn't have any meat as well as this with the sausage in it. And you can let this kind of hang out and, and marry the flavors together if you want. But if you are ready to serve dinner, you go ahead and grab your spaghetti squash. Like I said, go ahead and just leave it right in the skin. It's beautiful. I actually added a little bit more salt and pepper totally to your liking. And then you just take a couple nice scoops of that homemade sausage and homemade marinara sauce. I mean, if you really want to start impressing your family, this is where you start, guys. Everything's made from scratch. I know it looks difficult. It may even have sounded difficult while I'm talking through it, but this all comes together in less than an hour, and you will be amazed at the flavors. Go ahead and add some fresh parsley on top to really make it look special. 